Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Um, if you don't know who I am, I think most of you do. I'm Sandy Lewis, and uh, Gail has <laughs> put me in charge of technical uh, the, today. And um, if something goes wrong, so sorry. <laughs> so, but I have a lot of uh, co helpers today, and I really appreciate that. Um, Gail is on a staycation with her family. So this is a simple format uh, Zoom service. Um, and we have with us uh, today, uh, Joyce Scott. She is an ordained congregational minister. And many of you remember her as and her um, family from the many years that she coordinated our own Christian education program. The last few years, she and her husband, Mike, have been working in disaster relief with Samaritan's Purse, and she's excited to have been partnered with Jackson this past year. Samaritan's Purse uh, serve folks who have been severely affected by natural disasters, gutting their flooded homes, tarping their roofs, and clearing their yards of trees and debris. Um, their desire is to show uh, people concretely that Jesus loves them, stands with them, and offers them hope in their darkest times. And if any of you follow Joyce uh, Scott on Facebook, you know that all of this is true, and they're doing really good work. It's so fun to see the what they're doing and the results, and they're having fun doing it. It's just, it's so awesome. Um, so I'm going to turn everything over, uh, turn the service over to Joyce right now. Things will be a little different today because we don't have all of the technical pieces uh, that we normally would with um, Gail's husband. So um, bear with us this Sunday, and we hope everybody's well. And Joyce, go for it. <laughs> Andy, did you have one more announcement as well? Yes, I did. Thank you so much. Um, we have an annual meeting. Uh, coming up as a reminder for uh, Wednesday, January 20th at 7 p.m. And I'm sure you'll get uh, more reminders via your email, uh, but wanted to verbally say that. So thank you, uh, Joyce, for reminding me. Uh, we'll get through it together. It truly is a Body of Christ adventure this morning. For those of you who don't know, I am in the parking lot of Dunkin' Donuts because we don't have internet at my house. So if um, if Sandy and I get through this together, it'll just be wonderful. And I'm grateful to all the people who are helping in the technical fashion. It's wonderful to be able to see some of you, to be back with you and to be able to worship with you. And it's wonderful to be able to worship, period, in a time of absolute craziness in our world. So let us turn our hearts and our minds towards a time of worship. Um, Alan, would you be willing to lead us in the centering music? And if you would all pray with me. Dear God, we are so grateful that we have the blessing of being able to be together, even if it is virtual, but to be able to touch each other, speak with each other, um, just be together in your presence. You know, if this had happened 100 years ago, we would have been so much more isolated than we are today. And this truly is a blessing. We're coming together today because we do want to worship you. We want to offer you glory and thanksgiving for the blessings in our lives, especially in the troubled times. We want to be inspired today in some fashion, God, touch each and every one of us in some fashion so that the end of the, at the end of the service, we can feel stronger, we can feel more peace, um, and we can feel closer to you and go forward into this coming week um, ready to serve you more. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence in, your, in our lives, and we pray this all in your name. Amen. 
And then if you would actually all personally unmute so we can say the Lord's Prayer together and you are welcome to say whichever language you personally <laughs> prefer to use. And I understand there's a bit of a lag with this, but this is a special thing to be able to um, speak together in this way. So let us pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom thy come, kingdom. Uh, thy will be done. On earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And if you would mute all again, now we're going to sing, but we don't want to listen to each other lag while we're singing. And so we are going to sing um, one verse of the Christmas carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. And since we're all muted, you get to sing whatever words you know to that Christmas carol for that one verse. So enjoy your time with God. Alan, if you go ahead and lead whenever you're ready. Amen. I'd like to um, speak to Christmas carols for a moment before we get going on our scriptures and message. Um, I don't know how many of you remember that um, this past Wednesday is um, the Feast of Lights, Epiphany. And this past week in the midst of what for America was a very dark day, it just is very poignant that um, it was the day that the wise men came to Christ and spread the light of God throughout the world. So I just wanted to point that out in case you had missed it. Um, they're saying that it's going to be a day that's going to go down in history as a dark day, but we already know it as a light day. And that kind of paradox is stuff that God works with. So um, never don't have hope. God is bigger than everything that's going on. So I have two scriptures today. And you are going to have to bear with me because um, my, my computer is on my lap. And if I put anything on the computer, I'm sure I'm going to shut myself off. So <laughs> just stick with me here. Um, I'm not sure the first scripture, which uh, um, translation Gail posted it in. So mine might be slightly different, but I think it's pretty close. I do know that at the beginning of the scripture from Genesis 18, she did have a little... Um, uh, header there that says the judgment on Sodom. And that is not what we are focusing on at all today. What I want us to focus on in this scripture is the conversation between God and Abraham, which is really what's going to come to play when it comes to the message. So you can read along with me if you've got it in front of you. We are reading Genesis 18 verses 16 through 33. Then the men rose from there. Now the men are the messengers of God or the angels. And they just came and spoke to Abraham. And they just barely set up the covenant with him between God and Abraham that he was going to have many descendants and that Abraham would be God's servant. So then these men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on the way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I've known him, in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, 
because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that is come to me, and if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom, but Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, would you also destroy the righteous? with the wicked? Suppose there were only 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than the 50 righteous. Would you destroy all the city for lack of five? So God said, If I find there 45, I will not destroy it. And Abraham spoke to God yet again and said, suppose there should be 40 found there. And God said, I will do it for the sake of the 40. I will not do it for the sake of the 40. And then Abraham said, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak. Suppose 30 should be found there. So God said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And Abraham said, indeed, now I've taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found there. So God said, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. And then Abraham said, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak but once more. Suppose 10 should be found there. And God said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. So the Lord went his way as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Our second scripture from the New Testament, um, the epistle of the Apostle Paul to the city in Philippi, is as short and as poignant as the Old Testament scripture was long. Um, enjoy just for its sake. This is Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. May God bless to our understanding these readings from his holy word. So the message I have for you today is going to give you a little tiny glimpse of what Mike and I do in Samaritan's Purse, because it is a story from the field. But what I want to focus on is um, something over the past year that God has been teaching us and encouraging us in, um, which is pretty dramatic. And this is to pray not so much generally, but to pray specifically. And it's been quite a push for us. So I'm going to um, tell you the story of what we have experienced, complete with our faith experience of it. And then the two scriptures we just read are going to give us some insight into why. Why would we consider praying specifically in our walks with God? So starting back in May, this is all during the pandemic. Back in May, Mike and I were called to Midland, Michigan. And on this deployment, we responded to three dams which had broken and they had flooded completely several communities. The only volunteers Samaritan's Purse were receiving at this time were from out of state, from out of state. The only volunteers from out of state they were receiving at all were the leadership. And that's Mike and I, we are leaders. And so we arrived on site with maybe 20 other leaders to run the deployment. And leaders are the management, the cooks, the chaplains, um, any other administrative assessors, those who you know, judge the, whether we can do the work or not for a particular property, and then those who lead teams of volunteers out there. And that's what Mike and I do. 
all the other volunteers, the workforce had to be local so that they didn't have to travel and so that we didn't have to feed and house them all in close proximity during COVID. Praise God, local day volunteers did show up and we were able to send out three to five teams of 10 to 20 people each per day. And we ran the entire deployment over several months, totally and completely on local day volunteers. But there was one day, there was one day we didn't have anybody, maybe six, maybe seven. So as leaders, we began to panic and we began to pray. And one of the other team leaders, JR, asked Chandler, who was our assistant manager, what he could do. And she looked at him with that blank loss look that you have when you're panicking and said passionately, pray. <laughs> but JR responded to her saying, I only pray specifically. I need a number. <laughs> now Chandler wasn't sure how to answer that. So she was like, I don't know, 45? <laughs> 20 minutes later, as people began to arrive that day to volunteer, they passed a single guy out in the middle of the parking lot on his knees, praying that we received 45 volunteers that day. And when they had all arrived and the final count came in, it was exactly 45. We were creeped out <laughs> and our attention was caught, seriously. With that story, let's move on to September. Now, Mike and I are called to DeRitter, Louisiana, and now we're responding to the damage from Hurricane Laura. Samaritan's Purse, like so many other organizations, had learned better how to mitigate COVID exposure. And so we had capacity in DeRitter to take 60 overnight volunteers, as well as the day volunteers. But there were no overnight volunteers there were absolutely no day volunteers. For the past two weeks before Mike and I had arrived there, Lorenzo, who was the site manager, had been asking the chaplains to join the work crews. So we would have a crew one a day of six to seven people going out to do something. It was painfully, painfully obvious that at this rate, we were gonna be in Deritter until summer of 2021. But more painfully obvious was that the folks who were gonna be they were going to be without homes and roofs for that long. Many of these people were living in tents. Many were living in moldy conditions. Many were living in condemned houses with holes in the roofs because they didn't have anywhere else to go. The poverty down there is rampant. And I, who had been hauled in to answer phones because they didn't have an office worker either, was put in the position of having to say to folks calling in for help, I'm sorry, we can't help you right now. We have to put you on a waiting list. We desperately needed more help. And I remember JR up on his knees in Midland, Michigan. Now guys, I am a good congregationalist, even if I've moved on to worship charismatically more than often, but you know, I'm reserved. I was way too scared to ask God for 60 volunteers, which was our overnight capacity. And really, we only had two team leaders, you know, Mike, my husband, because I was in the office, he didn't have me, and Christy was one other team leaders. So we only had the potential for two teams. And two teams of 30 people each is rather unwieldy, and you often don't get as much done as if you have just a few people. So it wouldn't necessarily be more productive. So what I did want was 20. I wanted 10 for Mike, I wanted 10 for Christy. And I started to pray quietly, but specifically for 20 volunteers. Several times a day, I was saying to God, almost word for word, this I was what I was saying to God, please send us 20 volunteers, saying to God, I don't have the faith to ask you for 60, <laughs> but if you send us 20, I'll ask you for more then. <laughs> Just please send us 20 volunteers. And then the second hurricane, if you remember, Hurricane Delta descended, hit the exact same area in Louisiana. Samaritan's Purse had four deployments going at that time in Louisiana, and DeRitter was only one of them. And we were the northernmost deployment in the state. There were three other deployments that were farther south of us and so closer to the coast. It was deemed as Hurricane Delta was coming in and the severity of the hurricane, which was not as much as Laura, that um, we were in a safe place. We were gonna be able to go through the hurricane just fine. 
but two of the other deployments needed to evacuate so that we didn't make things worse for ourselves than they already were for the people and we could go back and help them as soon as the hurricane had finished up. So the deployment of Jennings sent all its volunteers home. The deployment of Lake Charles, if you remember the large city that got hit, had a number of volunteers that wanted to wait out the storm with us in leadership. So there I am sitting in the office with Lorenzo, the site manager, and I'm answering phones on my side. On the other side of the office, he's talking to the site site manager in Lake Charles. And suddenly I hear loudly over their conference call, this site manager at Lake Charles saying, I'm bringing 20 volunteers with me. <laughs> Stop me in my tracks. I whirled around and I stared a bit incredulous and quite a bit amused. Because follow this, incredulous because maybe, just maybe, God was answering my specific prayer specifically. So this had now happened to me but amused because these 20 volunteers weren't coming to work. They were coming to shelter from the storm. Then they were gonna go back to Lake Charles and work there. And I literally felt like God was playing with me with a twinkle in his eye. And he was saying, you prayed for 20 volunteers. You didn't say that they had to work. Okay, God, game on. <laughs> I began to pray for 20 able-bodied, hardworking, faithful volunteers to show up and work at our site. And the Monday, right after Hurricane Delta, we received a group of 14 young people, 14, four additional adult volunteers, Ed and Christy and Mike, the leaders, and we had 20. They weren't just 20, but the, the 14 young people inspired us in our faith each and every day. They came from a place where they spent a lot of time growing in their faith together as a group. And their relationships with God were calm and even casual. And as they moved through their days, they were in a discipline to ask God what he wanted them to learn from whatever they were experiencing. And they would share with us every night at dinner things that they felt God had told them what they were to learn about themselves and about God and about other people from what they were experiencing. Here we are, the leadership, we're all agonizing and panicking over our crippled deployment. And these kids came in and they challenged us mightily in our faith. So in answering my prayer for 20, God not only met the needs of the community and the needs for us to want to help them desperately, but he also met our needs for a shot of faith in the arm. And the kids wanted to come back, but not just 40 this time. They wanted to come back with 43. So I had to revisit my prayer with God because I told him I would consider asking for more if he sent me 20. So I adjusted my prayer and literally, again, I almost just about said it this way, God, I still don't have the faith to ask for 60, but I trust you. Send us however many we can handle. Whether that's little, whether that's big, I trust you. Send us what we can handle. Two weeks later, we received a third team leader, two office workers, two assessment teams, and 43 able-bodied, hardworking young people to volunteer. We were able to take everyone off of the waiting list and put them in the active files, and we were finally able to make significant progress on the workload in general. And for the next few weeks, we continued with three team leads and between 30 to 40 volunteers per week. We continued with, it stuffed down a little bit at Thanksgiving, but all the way up to the end of the deployment, which we were able to finish before Christmas, even um, December 10th was about when we finished. And up until that date, we had right around 20, all the way till the end. So now we come to the why and the how of it all. Nowhere in scripture does God tell us, I command you to pray specifically. So this is nothing like that. This is simply an encouragement. So why, why would he be encouraging us to pray specifically or you know, suggesting it at all for that matter? So let's look at these two scriptures that I pulled forth. 
Genesis 18 first. It's an example of a very long drawn out detailed conversation between God and Abraham, where Abraham pushes God, tests God's limits, and he gets God to concede not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if only 10, specifically 10 righteous souls are found within the city. So if we can consider this an example of a specific prayer in scripture, what might it tell us about praying specifically? First of all, the prayer is made in the context of a growing intimate relationship between Abraham and God. And I think this is important. Specific prayers are never a formula to get what we want or to force God's hand. They're part of something greater than that. They're part of a strong relationship with God as a foundation. We saw them, Abraham and God, starting that relationship. Just the, um, the chapter before we get to this conversation, that relationship had started and his specific request furthered that relationship along. So specific prayers are always a part of that relationship. Second of all, Abraham's prayer aligned with the heart of God as we, I think, pretty much can conclude it from when we look at scripture and certainly in the light of Jesus. See, God is contemplating justice, and we certainly know there are calls for justice all over the globe. Abraham is begging for mercy. I know what I see in my life is that God is both these things. He's justice and he's mercy. But nine times out of 10, if he has given the ability or a corner, even an inch to offer mercy, he's going to offer it and wait on the justice. JR's prayer in Midland, Michigan, for our volunteers to join our deployment was not so that we got all sorts of volunteers and could puff ourselves up and feel successful. It was because we had people out there in homes that couldn't get their homes fixed if we weren't there to help them right then. They were for the people and they were for mercy. Likewise, my prayers in Deritter, we were prepared to stay in Deritter all the way to next summer if we had to. We weren't going to leave. We were going to do what we had to do as long as people were asking us to do it. But that wasn't what was best for the people. We wanted them to be helped so much earlier. And we were asking God for mercy by asking for the volunteers. I wonder is if specific prayer and praying specifically is most effective and efficient when our requests align with the heart of God and with mercy and love. Moving into our second scripture, Philippians 4, 6 to 7. I'm going to read it again because it's just so wonderful. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. It's a plea from the Apostle Paul to the church in Philippi on how and why to pray. It suggests the relationship between them and God because it's talking about praying in everything. And so it doesn't specify specific, but it does specify everything. In everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. Praying without ceasing, it is called in 1 Thessalonians 5 through 17. And this suggests to me that same intimacy that we saw between God and Abraham in Genesis. Praying specifically in everything, Paul is telling us the how to do it. But the why in this passage is what's really dramatic. Why would we pray specifically? Be anxious for nothing. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Do you want less anxiety? Do you want more peace? Do you want the sanity of your mind to be preserved? Do you want that peace that passes all understanding that we have when it doesn't seem like we should, when everything around us is upside down? When God answered my prayer for 20, 
notice what happened. Not only did I pray for more, like I had more faith, but when I spoke to him, I said, I trust you. I trust you in this. You sent us 20. I saw you do that. So I'm saying, send us exactly what we can handle, however much that is. And I know you know our abilities better than we know our abilities. I trust you. The more specifically we pray, the more God answers specifically, the more we trust God. And in the process of that, the stronger our relationships with God become and the more we rely on God on a day-to-day -day basis. God wants us in those relationships with him. So he encourages us to pray specifically so that he can increase our trust exponentially and so that we can receive those spiritual rewards. No anxiety, God's peace, contented hearts, sound minds. And in the process, in the process, if we're aligning ourselves with God's heart, mercy will be more fully bestowed on a weary, weary world. God's going to do what he's going to do with or without us. He wants us to be a part of it. He wants us to call some of the shots even, and he's willing to slow his purposes down so that we can get on board with it. So. Today, I'm giving you this challenge to do with it what you will. I offer you the story of my experience. I offer to you the push of your own faith and trust. And I offer to you the challenge of praying specifically somewhere in your life. I will give you one more quick example. This last fall, Mike and I have been praying specifically for a 40-year-old man who was severely struck with COVID and was on a ventilator for two to three months and then had several months of rehab. And we prayed specifically for him and the doctors and the nurses and strength of body and spirit. But at one point, um, his mom said, you know what he needs? He needs his systems to work together. You know, I think there were hundreds of people praying that his systems got strong enough to work together. And he is still in rehab, but he was able to get home for Christmas. You know, it's not as dramatic as our examples, but honest to goodness, I believe that God honored it. It just really felt real. So I pray that God guards your hearts and minds and grants you the peace that passes all understanding. And we are going to turn to him directly right now in our prayers. It's why I asked Gail to put the prayers of the people after our pastoral message here. And I've got a pad of paper. And okay, so we're gonna see how this works. Um, I'm going to ask you to speak out um, because, well, let me see if I can find gallery setting, I can see you all at once here. Okay, I've got you in gallery. So I might be able to see you if you wave at me and I can call on you. But if I don't see you, go ahead and um, uh, say something and I will call on you. So we want both um, what we need to be praying for, concerns we have, and we'd also love celebrations. I open it to the floor. You need to unmute yourself and share what you would share. So we, yes, we should pray for Sasha Black as she prepares for her surgery and for Richard Himmelright as he prepares for upcoming procedures. Thank you. God bless. I would say Barry Brodel. Um, he's been struggling for a long time with his injury and he had a setback. He was in the hospital for quite a while. He's back home now, but having PT and he's really struggling. Kevin, go ahead and unmute yourself. Prayer for uh, Reverend Gail and Chris and her, their family that they have a nice vacation. And for Pastor Nathan and Jennifer. And for Katie's grandmother who's in hospice, that God will be with her and that Katie will get to see her. And um, prayer for my friend Paula that her back will heal. And prayer for Jeanette and Sue that they're 
they'll have good health and prayer for the frontline workers, the doctors and nurses, the first responders and the military. Thank you, Kevin. I, I have a friend who I don't wanna say her name only because I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but um, she had a procedure done a couple of weeks ago and um, still waiting for results from that. And I know that she has joined us this morning via um, uh, not this, this platform, but a different platform. So she's listening. So I pray that um, her results come back um, great. And if they are a challenging that we, she knows that she has a huge community behind her to help her um, successfully navigate it. So. Thank you, Sandy. I need to clarify, um, Kevin prayed for Gail and Chris. Is Chris Gail's husband? Yeah. Yes. Thank, thank you, I haven't met him, okay. And Joyce, I would add our friends in Zimbabwe, they're still struggling. Every month it seems that they've got a bigger problem than the one before. Are they still um, struggling with a, a dictatorship as well as everything else? I hate to say, I don't know. Okay. Jeanette, do you know? I don't know if Jeanette is on. But okay. they- um, One way or another, they're in severe hardship. At Christmas, they were videoed, sent to us with them singing, and now they're all locked down for a month. They can't even go to church because of COVID. Because of COVID, okay, thank you. We have celebrations to add in, guys, praise reports. Anything you've seen God do specifically in your world this last week? Wendy, we can't hear you. See the sunshine. <laughs> yes, it was good. I think we're supposed to get a little more this afternoon. It's beautiful here right now. Yeah. Um, I'd like to celebrate all the people that I see and some that I don't see here today, but the people that we know we've prayed for during their challenges and mm -hmm. many of them have come through well and are basically healthy and, and uh, living a, a, full, a more full life that they would like to live. But I know as we pray for people, sometimes I forget at the other end to be grateful to God for helping them through. And, and a lot you, of folks have come through on the other side. Thank you, Meg. That's really amazing. All righty. Kevin, okay. go ahead. Oh, did you uh, see something? Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful because God loves those who are rejected. Mm. Um, God loves the underdogs. And God loves you even when you're a mess. And I'm just grateful to God in our church. And I'm grateful for you, Joyce, for being here today. Thank you, Kevin. It's nice to see you, Joyce. I'm grateful to be here too. This is yeah. really a little yeah. scary, but a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, really, when you think of what you're doing, you are delivering the message from the inside of a car in northern New Hampshire. It's pretty crazy. Who'd have thunk? Who'd have yeah. thunk? <laughs> right. Uh. Oh my gosh. Sometimes God really has to shake us up to get us to uh, move our are set in stone ways. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> All righty, I wanted to uh, ask if those on phone, if there's anybody on phone who needed to unmute and share anything, either prayer or concern, I wanted to give you a moment to do so. Okay, then um, before we pray, I did not get um, Pastor Gail's list of what she normally goes through on body parts. And it seems very important to me, but I'm not going to try to do it. But I wanted to hold it up as a piece of the prayer and ask us all to hold it up in our in our hearts. Because, um, you know, this is a part of your prayer life right now. Remembering everybody who's out there with um, little concerns, big concerns that are spoken or unspoken. So just going to ask you all to hold that in your hearts. So let's pray together. 
God, we are so grateful for your presence in our lives and for your love and for your faithfulness, God, for your faithfulness to each and every one of us. We thank you that no matter what we're going through, you stand by us and you use both the good and the bad to make better. And so we want to lift all these people up, God, who are struggling with physical challenges of one form or another. Some are coming up on um, surgeries. Some have injuries that they're trying to recover for. Some have come through and are finding their way back to wholeness as they speak. But we want to raise their names before you. You know their situations much more than we do and ask you to not just bless them physically, but to draw them closer to you in the experience and to, I guess, help their spirits to glow in the midst of adversity, that they can find hope um, and joy in their futures, having come through these challenges. We want to list, um, raise up Sasha as she's preparing for surgery and Richard as he has something coming up as well and ask that you strengthen them both body and soul be with the doctors and the nurses preparing and just give them wisdom and discernment on the right um, choices to make as they go through those health challenges we want to pray for Barry who's having some setbacks and what he's experiencing and asking you to come alongside him and strengthen him and get him back on the road to recovery God in whatever form that would be. We want to raise up, um, and I'm not sure, God, if any of these are physical, but you know what their needs are. Nathan and Jennifer, Katie, Paula, Jeanette and Sue. We want to pray for Sandy's friend and that um, she has courage, God, facing whatever is coming up in those results, that whether it's good or bad results, you are God and you are going to work in her life. But we want to pray right now, God, that they're good results. That's what we want. I'm sure it's what she wants. And we pray for that, God, that you give her the good results that she's looking for and she will be able to build that into her life and be able to serve you more fully um, because of that result, Jesus. We are praying for that. We want to pray for our friends in Zimbabwe, um, pray for health first and foremost, um, that they aren't hit by COVID or that not many of them are hit by COVID, not really even knowing the choices, that if they are, God, please, you know, um, help them to recover, get the resources to them in a country which has so much less than we do, get the resources to them so that they can recover and heal. Um, Help them to know that they love each other, God, even if they can't touch each other on, on a Zoom thing, kind of like we're doing, that they love each other and that they're praying for each other, God. Solidify that community in miraculous ways, God, um, and not just the church that we're partners with, but the entire country, because we know darn well if our church there, our partner church is shut down with COVID, that it's all over the place. And, and that's scary. I pray for the benefits of their country being open air and um, fresh spaces being a um, strength and a bonus for their situation and that they can utilize that to their benefit to get through it. And I pray that they rely on you, God, rely on you for the courage to get through um, and to bind them all together, even when physically it seems like they are apart. Thank you, Jesus, for their um, faithfulness to you and their service to you as a church body and for the whole country, God, we just pray for them. want to pray for um, Pastor Gail and Chris that they have the most relaxing week and special time with, I believe it's her daughter, um, that she lets all of this um, go, the craziness of the world and the minutia of us getting together on Zoom with all of our little foibles here, that we are fine. Um, that we miss her, that we um, want her with us, but that we are fine. We can get through and it is okay. So please may she have a rejuvenated week and come back um, ready to go strong, having seen you and felt your touch in her life. And may that be the case for her entire family, God. We want to thank you for her daughter who's been serving on the front line down in New York and for keeping her safe and healthy during that. And I pray that her week with her mom and dad can um, rejuvenate her as well. And with that, we want to lift up all 
um, frontline workers. And as Kevin said, for the military that's out there and um, I guess law enforcement too these days who are out there, you know, doing their darndest, you know, to um, keep the world together when there are just so, so darn many challenges. And I pray for each and every one of them, safety and health, strength of mind, strong immunity. Um, and again, I pray that fresh air thing because I honestly, I think it's what has blessed us in the North country here beyond measure that our numbers here are so much lesser than in so many other places. We want to thank you, God, as Meg raised up that there are so many people we prayed for previously that you have brought through. And we are so grateful for that when it comes to health challenges. We do recognize that your power and your glory is seen whenever you bring somebody back to health. And we are so grateful for each and every one of those people that have been restored to health and pray that you continue to be with them. Be with each and every one of us, free with our nation, be with our leaders, um, be with our local leaders, our communities, um, and just may your will be known and may your will be fulfilled um, in the midst of whatever, whatever is happening, God, may your will be fulfilled for each and every one of us, bring good out of bad. We thank you, Jesus, again, for your love and your presence in our lives and for this time to be together today. In your name we pray. Amen. All righty. Uh, I have to bring my order of worship up again. But Tish or Sandy, one of you is to lead the offering. Yep. Um, it's just a, a, a reminder um, to everyone to continue um, your faithful giving at jacksonncc.org or mail drop off uh, your check to the church whatever way you have chosen to maintain your commitment to our church's vitality, we ask that you do that. Um, again, we thank Joyce for her very um, inspiring message today and her uh, uplifting prayer. Um, I don't know about you all, but I feel really awesome right now. <laughs> so um, I'm going to, and I'm sure everybody feels the same way. I'm gonna uh, turn it back uh, to you, um, Joyce and we'll go from there. Okay, our closing hymn, guys, if everybody wants to mute, including myself after I stop talking, is um, two verses of Amazing Grace, and you get to sing whatever two verses are your favorite two verses. So, Alan, I'll ask you to go ahead and lead that when you are ready. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the God, Lord shine his faith upon you and bring you peace. May he shine his face onto your family for generations and generations, their children and their children. And may he guard your hearts and your minds in the peace of Jesus Christ, the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Alan, if you would go ahead and lead us in the interlude.
okay, I'm turning over, I think, to, to Sandy to lead us in some uh, social time. This is awesome. <laughs> Online <laughs> fellowship. Um, so please feel free to unmute and say hi to each other in whatever way you're accustomed to doing. I Great have to see a you, request. Good morning. <laughs> hi, sweetie. I have a request if possible uh, from the way station. We are in great need of hangers, both uh, pant style and regular hangers. We would appreciate any um, addition. We are in uh, much need. So that would be appreciated. Yeah, well, Thank she, you. She works directly with COVID patients because she's always giving them uh, x-rays and things like that. So uh, yeah, no, she didn't hurt from one of the first. And uh, uh, you know, she a little I think that's first. another phone call. <laughs> ah. I think it's Bob on another call. No, um, but and, if you need the hangers, it must mean that you've got a lot of clothing donations that have to be hung up, huh? This is true. Uh, we have beautiful brand new jackets with tags still on them. Perfect for there's children's. I mean, it's, it's absolutely high quality, good stuff. And we are uh, making a boutique downstairs where the living room was so that we have more um more availability for our guests and it's it's really wonderful to see all that is happening down there so we would appreciate any um any help so god bless you thank you thank you sue and joyce Joyce, I was really inspired and blessed by your sermon today. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Good to meet you. So you Good must to need Joyce. other things and coat hangers at the way station. <laughs> yes, that's that's what I need. Um, I need all kinds of hangers. Hello, Sir. You, you, how about food? I beg your pardon? How about food? Do you need food? Um, talk to Jeanette. <laughs> she was, I'm, I'm into the clothes right now. She's into the food. Okay. With Nathan. Um, so she would, she would be able to answer that. I'm sure she wouldn't say no. No. Yeah. yeah. Cheryl, did you have something? No, I was just saying hi to, uh, hi back to Sue and hi to everybody actually. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, can I say two things? Sure. Okay. One thing, um, Pojan called this week and <laughs> had a great chat. And uh, Joyce, he knew that you were going to uh, be with us this Sunday. So he, boy, I'll tell you, every time you talk to that man, he's more inspirational, more alive, more happy. Uh, life is very good for him. So he says hello. And That's then awesome. I have a Joyce, I have a question. How are your boys and, and where are they? My boys are, um, well, I, they are well. They are well. Um, COVID's turned their lives a bit upside down too. Caleb and his girlfriend, Sarah, graduated with fine arts last May and they had a year and a half of employment in set design in theaters set up already. And like who gets into this field? They got into it. They had a year and a half of solid employment that all went mm -hmm. poof. <laughs> so they are home here in Shelburne, New Hampshire, and have actually been blessed to be able to do some construction on one home. A guy's totally gutting his home, so it's about as socially distant as you could get. And they've been able to make money and probably get more skills towards what they're hoping to do. And they are still hoping that um, in April, the theater that hired them may be able to bring them back. They may be able to get started. So we're hoping, we don't have huge amounts of hope, but we're hoping that they'll still be able to get into it. Gabriel is in the Coast Guard. He is in North Carolina. He mm. is actually working in counterterrorism. Um, has not been able to do much of anything because of COVID. Um, they are down to like half time of work. And so he spends most of his days hanging out in his boat. And honestly, he's pretty bored. <laughs> but they're both surviving. They're, yeah. they're getting through. Thank yeah. you for asking. Good. Good. 
Um, so we're going to, uh, I don't know if Alan, you are prepared to play any more songs that's on our list here, or should we just um, say goodbye I, I can, to everyone? Play, uh, I'm going to say more. goodbye. What? You're going to play one more, Alan? Great. Thank you. <laughs> play one more on the organ. <laughs> great. Have a good week, everybody. Have a great God week, bless everybody. everybody. Miss so you all. Miss you all. Thank all right, you. thanks. Good luck with everything, yeah. Joyce. Thank, Thank you, you, Joyce. Thank Bye. you, Joyce. Thank you.